Greetings, this is Artie from Artifact Electronics. What are we looking at here? This is an Atari Asteroids main PCB. This particular one comes out of my Cocktail Asteroids that has been featured in one or two prior episodes. It is fully functional. So why are we looking at this? And uh, I'll show you why. Looky here. This is a clone of the board you saw before, which was uh, manufactured locally, a few miles from where I live. And uh, the short backstory on this is that uh, a few months ago I was selling an Atari uh, upright arcade game locally and a fellow by the name of Nick came by and bought it from me. We got to talking and uh, he told me that the reason he was buying that game was that he wanted to build a clone board and uh, he hadn't decided yet whether to do an FPGA based design or go with the original design or run and, uh, uh, r build something that runs an emulator. It was unclear at the time and uh, we promised to stay in touch and then we didn't talk to each other for a few months. A few weeks ago he contacts me and uh, says uh, I my board's done. I would like to come over and test it in your machines. I have both an upright and a cocktail and uh, he wanted to test and see how well his board works. Now uh, before we get to the part of how well it works, let's do a little bit of a comparison between the original and this one and see how much of a clone this actually is. So here you can see father and son and uh, the layout is identical. Must have taken quite some time to get this board routed because layout, well obviously you have a template here and uh, the schematics are freely available so that's just labor to put it in. Not too much brain surgery involved but to get this thing to layout identical to this one uh, you obviously can't auto route it. I guess you could start by auto routing it, but uh, if you want the layout to match, which it pretty much does, uh, you have to spend quite a lot of time with each net to make it route it just right and match the original. So he spent a lot of time on that, Nick that is, and then uh, he had to go out and source most of the parts. Well, he tried to source all of the parts, but some of them, I think it's 99 point something percent original on here, except for a few uh, exceptions. And uh, then on top of that, he actually hand soldered this board. This is board number four of six from the first run. And uh, then he brought the board over to me. So what are the differences? Not that many. The uh, first, first difference, which is actually quite useful, is uh, this board is uh, changed so that it can use standard 2716 PROMs uh, rather than I don't even know what the name on these is. These are, uh, well, EPROMs over here. These are ROMs, factory mask ROMs. And the pinout is slightly different from a 2716 in that I think a select line and an address line are swapped on it. Anyway, you have uh, standard 2716s here, which are still easy to get. There's the... Uh, vector ROM over here which was also of the uh, mask ROM type originally. This also accepts a uh, 2716 and finally 
we have over here one of the small uh, proms which are also well I think you can get them but the pain with these is to get a programmer that can still program them and they're generally not that reliable so what he did was he built a carrier board with a 16-pin uh, dip plug underneath that also accepts the 2716 to solve the uh, PROM pinout incompatibility versions and non-availability versions. Let's see, and other than that, there is this guy over here. And that was the one TTL chip that he couldn't source, that he couldn't find. This was originally a 16-pin 74LS83, which is a full adder with fast carry. And he couldn't get that, but what he was able to get was a 74HC283, which is this guy. Of course, surface mount. And... Uh, Functionally, the 83 and the 283 are equivalent, except that the 83 has a fast carry output, whereas the 283 doesn't, but I guess that's not being uh, utilized. So compatibility is assured here. And uh, so, yeah, he built a carrier board to adapt the uh, surface mount to the dip and uses the opportunity to rewire or reroute the signals so that you could get the equivalent functionality out of it. If I had built this, if this was my first run of boards, I would have probably gone in and uh, socketed everything in here. But uh, I guess uh, Nick was, uh, he had no problems with his soldering skills and got the whole thing to work. The only things uh, socketed are pretty much what was socketed on the original board. Here's the underneath. Uh, soldered really well. The human wave soldering machine uh, strikes again. And that's it. That is the board. Nick very graciously gave me this board. He wouldn't take anything for it. But uh, even with that done, which I'm very appreciative of, there's still a few points of uh, criticism I must put in here. Shouldn't be a surprise to Nick because I've already discussed it with him. But uh, let me tell you what I think. First of all, you may have noticed there's no silk screen on here. Uh, it's a bit of a defect because it makes part hunting, parts hunting really difficult when you're trying to find uh, measure signals or something on here. And uh, that is something that uh, should be fixed in a soon to be upcoming new rev of the clone board. Second of all, the only problem I've encountered, or we encountered while testing this board, was that when we put it in a uh, cocktail cabinet, it didn't always recognize that it was in a cocktail cabinet. And the way that works on the Ataris is there's no dip switches for that, but rather two pins on the edge connector are shorted through the harness in the cocktail game. And that basically tells it to flip the display uh, when switching players. So player one, because it has uh, the, the cocktail has two sets of control panels, and so the image must be rotated. And it didn't that didn't quite work right. Now the reason for that can be that my harness was. Uh, the harness that plugged in here because I checked the harness and it was shorting the uh, two pins correctly but the harness may have been uh, dirty not making good contact or whatever 
And the way we proved that was basically we made a uh, jumper here that jumpers the two pins permanently. And after doing that, the game worked perfectly. Nothing else. Everything else seemed to make good contact and everything worked fine except for that. But that does bring me to my second point. And that is, if you look at the edge connector, it's really, it's really not plated. I mean, that's it's maybe it is thinly tin plated. I don't. I'm no expert in that. But I think this would be a problem. It's already showing some slight marks of use by having inserted it uh, less than a handful of times. And this needs to be plated with whatever the originals are plated with. Thin gold, whatever. Whatever doesn't cost a whole lot, but makes this more durable and makes it a little bit thicker. So then maybe the contacts would work better. Now we measured the thickness of the board with contacts against the original behind it and uh, the numbers seem to match. So it's not that this part is too thin. And... But uh, my, my recommendation on this is definitely to plate this with something. So we have better connectivity and more longevity. Before I forget, you can contact Nick in the uh, description below. He gave me an email address and told me that I could publish it in the video. So if you have any uh, questions about the board, want to get one, want to ask him questions about this, make sure to contact him. And uh, another reason is, is this was uh, basically a test run for him to see how well he could clone a board. He has more loftier plans and uh, that probably has something to do with a game that uh, uses color. Still a vector game and uh, has the words war, wars and star in the game title. And I'll uh, leave it at that. But uh, make sure to give Nick a shout, whether it's uh, just to tell him what a great job he did, or if you want to get one of these from him. But now, for the most important test, let's plug in the board and play a game. Can you say plug and play? Look at that. Fits right in. The screw holes match up. And... Uh, now it's finally time to go in and play a game. Okay, off we go. Off we don't go. I gotta set it to free play. Alright, here we go. Saucers. 
You know, this strategy is what caused them to replace asteroids with asteroids with lights. Because if you were good at this, you could do this for hours. Kind of takes away from the game. But, you know, you can rack up points. But he left the one asteroid there, so I can continue doing this. What a shot! Oh, last asteroid's gone, we get a new rack. we get killed. But at 10,000, oh, I didn't make 10,000. That's not good. Well, there you go. The board works. Well, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. It's, uh, I guess, the board, if you had found an would find an original asteroids board that was NOS, i.e. new old stock, probably you'd pay hundreds and hundreds of dollars for it. But now, uh, looks like you can get an NNS for new new stock board from Nick. So uh, drop him a line. Again, his contact is in the description of the video. I'd appreciate a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please go ahead and do so. And by all means, leave me a comment. And we'll see you next time.